Well, I'll do that again. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our session. Um, empathy in Action, How Every Student in Vermont Can Be a Change Maker. My name is Abby, and I work at Bridgeport Central School, and I am a, actually a, an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer. If you haven't heard of AmeriCorps or VISTA, AmeriCorps is a national community service program, and you do a year term of service. And VISTA, the VISTA portion of that is particularly to work in communities of poverty. And I am uh, working on increasing access and retention to higher ed for these pre-K through sixth graders. So it's really about instilling college aspirations and changing the culture around how people in the community and how the students think about college and what they can achieve. So, Thank you, and I'm Laura White, and I work at Ashoka, which is the Global Association of Social Entrepreneurs. And at Ashoka, I manage the Changemaker Schools Network. And this is a program that started in the United States, but it's starting to expand globally everywhere Ashoka has an office. And we recognize elementary schools that do an outstanding job of teaching empathy, teamwork, leadership, problem solving, the skills that you need to be a change maker, um, and schools that value these particular skills as much as more traditional ones like math and literacy. And Bridport Central School uh, is one of the schools that we recognized thanks to Middlebury that introduced us to them. So it's been a really fantastic partnership and that's what's brought me here today. So everybody had a chance to take a look at the little, this is our mini Bridport Bevel. Bridport Bevel is actually our student newsletter that we, newspaper that we started last year with Middlebury students. So Middlebury students come and really run this program with some of our students. And so our first person here is actually with us today. So thank you Molly for coming. And uh, she, so she's one of the folks that's been coming out the last few weeks to take over from the previous person and working diligently with, with those kids. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to do a little bit of a, a highlight, a little profile of a couple of our, our student volunteers is to show you how they're using things that they're excited and passionate about to actually work with our students and to help them get excited and passionate about something. And one of my favorite lines that Molly actually said in here is, um, one student is working on writing jokes, but it's not about the jokes, it's about trying to get him engaged. And I was like, yes, Molly, that's awesome. I love to hear that. Um, because that's, yeah, and they're funny. And I actually sit in the library, and that's where they work, and it's fascinating to sit and listen to that. Do you want to talk about, about that? Just your experience so far? Well, I don't want to steal the show from you at all. Steal it. But <laughs> um, I guess what I will just say is that it's a lot of fun and that um, I'm, as Kelsey knows, because we do the newspaper together, I just love journalism and um, I didn't have anything like that until I got to college and it's really cool to go there and help these kids out and I don't think they're really that passionate about journalism, but it's just <laughs> <laughs> hanging out with them and just talking to them. And they may not be excited about it now, but I, you know, you are, you're other person in your cohort here, Machi said that that's something that he did when he was a kid and got him interested in other things. And so mm -hmm. you never know what's going to be that thing that sparks something in a, in a student, especially you know, students don't always have a lot of um, empowerment in their own lives. So to be able to do something that they're interested in, like writing jokes or talking about, um, you know, a book or the hockey game next week, you know, mm -hmm. it could be something they're excited about. So. Uh, so we just want you to think a little bit about something that you're passionate about, especially the students, because we're going to have you thinking a little bit about that today in terms of what you could share with um, other with, with the Bridgeport community and how your passions can be transformed into social entrepreneurship. So take a couple minutes and get something in your head that you're particularly passionate about, and then we're going to share that with each other. Maybe that doesn't even take a couple minutes. Maybe. Okay. Let's take 10 seconds. <laughs> and then we'll all share together. Okay, I think it's been 10 seconds. Who would like to share something that they're passionate about? There's zero passion in this room. Oh, so say your name as you. Um, and I'm Lisa Cannon. And actually, I'm a former Ashoka. I used to work at Ashoka. Oh my goodness! Years back in Vermont. So, wow. Um, I'm passionate about global interconnectedness. Okay. Great. Other folks. I think most of us will be a little shared because this is a small group. So don't be shy. Yes. Um, well, I am interested 
definitely in education, and I'm interested in thinking about how sustainability education and literacy education can be combined, and how we can teach people to care about the environment and also um, gain better writing. Excellent. And what's your name? Sarah. Great. Yes. Hey, I'm Michael. I'm focused on, or I'm passionate about leadership development with the focus being on improving your emotional intelligence so you, that you can lead and connect with people better. Awesome. Yes. Uh, I'm Gary Lacey. I am interested in music, passionate about music, and uh, it seems like most of the world connects with music. It's like a universal language, and uh, it's a good way to connect with the world. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yes. I'm Dorothy, um, and I'm interested in languages. Cool. Um, languages. What languages? Uh, I think Spanish and Chinese. Awesome. Um, but I like all languages. Great. Thank you. What do you like to do for fun? This is not <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yes. So, so not um, just in the context of kids, I um, I think that kids, and I'm passionate about the idea of using sports to engage kids. Cool, me too. Awesome. Oh, and I'm Becky. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alyssa, and my interest, my passion around kids is writing, and especially poetry. Cool. You're raising your hand? Um, yeah, my name is Fernando, and as of lately, I've been really interested in the importance of sharing and learning to live with less. especially Taekwondo. Awesome. Great. Or you were sharing something you were passionate about earlier today. Um, well, I'm, I'm Jonah. Uh, I'm passionate about uh, public speaking, I guess, and, uh, and leadership. Uh. Awesome. Thanks, Jonah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm Charles, um, and I'm very interested in food, uh, so anywhere between uh, the accessibility to food or uh, just providing better quality to food to the cafeterias. Great, thank you. You haven't shared it, have you? No. All right. I'm Sophie, um, and I'm interested in film and uh, like personal or uh, learning through your personal experience. Cool. Yes. Uh, my name is Betty, and um, I'm interested in a lot of things, but uh, more important is like women's health and uh, reading novels. Awesome. Who else hasn't shared yet? Some folks in the back. Yes. I'm Tiffany, and um, I missed the meeting, so I work with Ashley, and I didn't get to meet you. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to start reading on Monday, too, so we'll have to get connected. Okay. <laughs> Um, and so personally, I'm passionate about kayaking and camping, and more professionally, I, um, it's very important to me to mm -hmm. help Middlebury College students engage in community and, and get to know people and um, work on challenges and opportunities, cool. whether it's locally or around the world. Thank you. Does anybody else want to share something they're passionate about? Yes. Uh, my name is Casey, and I'm passionate about creating experiences where um, people feel successful in their learning. Awesome. Very cool. And I'm Laura, and I'm passionate um, recently, I guess a random thing I'm passionate about is dinosaurs. <laughs> How about you, Abby? Oh, gosh. 
You know, I should have had an answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love a lot of these. Um, I, my my big thing recently is food in general. I like, but um, food access to quality, food justice kind of issues um, too. And I'm sorry, I was turned that way so I didn't see the set, but. Um, because I feel like it's interconnected with everything. Yeah. Um, and college access, obviously, because I'm spending my next 11 months doing that too. So, absolutely. Yeah. Great. So, the big kind of central question for our gathering here today is uh, really challenging ourselves to think about how we take what we're passionate about, what makes us feel alive, and how we share that with students, which in turn helps them figure out what they love and how they can share what they love with the world by being a change maker. That's what we're going to explore today. So I wanted to share with you some of the things that are going on between Middlebury and Bridgeport. And um, there are lots of things happening, but I'm going to focus on a few. Just to give you a little bit of background about Bridgeport, it's about, the school's about 11 miles west of here. It took me like 15 minutes to get here. It's really close, but it's very different from Middlebury. It's actually in a little pocket of poverty. And there is a history of low academic achievement and um, high incidence of, of behaviors, we'll call them. And the parents and community have a, there is some alienation around, you know, between them and the school. There's been some negative experiences that they experienced growing up. And so there's a little bit of a disconnect between the community and, um, and the school. We have several homeless families. There are, um, there's pretty high turnover in terms of the students. There's a lot of transitional population. About 35% of the community are farmers. About 25% of our students have parents who either are or were incarcerated. And about 65% free and reduced lunch um, in terms of um, income level as well. So those are the only percentages that I'm gonna throw at you, but I wanted to give you a little bit of context for, for Bridgeport. But we have an awesome new principal, so this is her third year. Her name is Kathleen Kilborn, and she's been doing amazing stuff to connect with Middlebury and to turn a lot of that stuff around. And a lot of what she's working on and what the school is fo focusing on is around mindfulness and empathy. So having this relationship with Middlebury students has really helped to build that, build that programming up. The goals overall of the relationship is to increase academic achievement, all schools want to do that, right? To have decreased behaviors and to strengthen that relationship with parents and the community. And that's actually a big part of my role as well at, at Bridgeport. And ultimately, we want to produce academically and socially well-rounded students. And there's a big focus on emotional intelligence because a lot of students don't know how to express their frustrations. They do it with their bodies rather than with their words. So even as I'm like hearing teachers, you know, handling the students that are kind of going by in the hallway, they're saying, okay, what do you need? Tell me with your words. And there's a lot of focus on providing the support that their, that their bodies need so that they can actually be in the classroom and, and learn. So, a couple of the cool things that are going on. Um, last year, the baseball team actually came out once a week during recess, and they just came to play and teach baseball. Recess is a half an hour, it's outside. The, the kids were outside today in the freezing weather. They, weren't, they haven't been outside when it's a little bit colder, but they, they need that time to get outside and get you know, some of that physical energy worked out. And the baseball team being there was, I think the biggest part was they're just demonstrating leadership and teamwork just by being there and teaching them baseball, how to play, how to take turns at bat and that kind of thing. And, you know, if a kid's asked, gonna ask, well, how can I play, how can I play a baseball like you do? You know, the first thing they're gonna say is, well, you have to go to college. So, all right, awesome, we're gonna instill that idea of college in there. And they have to have certain grades, they have to do well academically to get into a baseball program at a college. So just a lot of really positive role modeling there and inherently showing teamwork and leadership. One of the really cool things that's at Bridgeport is called the Panther Pad. Panthers are not only a Middlebury mascot, but it's also for Bridgeport, so we share that in common. There were some architectural study students who came out, were doing a project on the environmental impact on education and learning and wanted to create a safe space for our students when they were having those moments where they couldn't be in the classroom or they were frustrated or they were acting out and they weren't able to learn so that they could go someplace and kind of get that energy out. Um, last week there was a student, a little kindergartner, who he just needed a minute. He needed a snack and he needed a minute. So he literally like pulled some blankets around him and made a little cave for himself because that's just kind of what he needed in that moment. And by taking care of 
like his needs for food and also just needing to kind of feel safe in this literal like sheltered cave, he was able to be in the space that he needed to physically to get back to class and actually do some learning. Um, and I know there was something else I wanted to say about that, so I just wanted to say it. Oh yeah, so they worked with the kids and figured out how do they want to decorate this room. You walk in there and you feel like you're actually in an aquarium, because it's all decorated with fish and the kids painted it, and there's actually an aquarium in there and there's just bean bags everywhere, and the fluorescent lights are covered up. So they were able to work with the students and take their own interests in you know, the, environment, the environmental aspects of life, because they're architectural students, and, and were able to create that safe space. Uh, a couple more programs we have going on, the Community Friends Program. I don't know if any of you are community friends, but it's like a big sister, big brother type program, and we actually have 16 of our students connected with Middlebury students. And I know that they can work in other communities as well, so if you're interested in that, it's a very good program. And it's just an opportunity for college students to connect with our students and just be a positive role model, somebody who's gone to college, somebody who comes from a totally different place than Bridport, to be able to share each other's experiences. It's not just a one-way relationship. I think sometimes actually the college students can get more out of these, out of these relationships sometimes. And, um, and it's about the relationship. There's no special skill needed. It's just having that interest and in wanting to connect with somebody and um, showing up is really like 90% of building a relationship with, um, with you and with anybody really. Let's be, let's be real. And then our, la our last example I wanted to talk to you about was one that um, is highlighted actually on the Ashoka website. So if you go on there, which I highly recommend, there's a lot of great information, is a volunteer survey that was created last year during the J term with an intern. And it was um, Kathleen, our principal, she wanted to think about ways to engage the community in unique ways. And um, she wanted community members to realize and know that they're valuable and valued and that they have things to offer to the school. So whether it was they wanted to tutor somebody or they could change the oil on the school bus, that they're, you know, they're a valued part of the community from the school's perspective and that could initiate that um, positive relationship. So the intern um, and Kathleen worked together to create a survey and the survey went out to everybody in Bridport and they actually ended up creating um, a volunteer, volunteer resource guide, volunteer manual which has you know, everybody's information and, uh, and their interests and what they can offer. And somebody even in here, my favorite one is, uh, I think it's under other areas of interest that you can offer, um, and it says worms. And I think that's <laughs> awesome. Because <laughs> I'm all about like, composting and worms and that kind of stuff, and she, she's actually in the school a lot. Um, she's our PTO. She's the PTO president. She doesn't even have kids in the school. I mean, she, so she's really engaged. So. Um, so this is a way for when teachers or, or school staff you know, need something. Tonight there's like a bingo thing, a bingo fundraiser that sixth grade's doing. Um, you know, they can reach out to people who can offer to donate items or their time. And um, this is just a, a great resource. So you will see there is a volunteer survey on your table um, that we'd love to have you fill out if you're interested in, in participating at all. It is online too, so there's a, a link over there. Um, I can do a sales pitch on here too. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately the common thread is that people are demonstrating empathy by just providing a service to the students and community. So this, you know, little bit of students, that's what they're doing. Um, and the thing that I really love about, for example, the volunteer resource guide is that this in turn actually facilitates other people demonstrating empathy to our students as well. And for us, and we're demonstrating empathy to the community by saying like, you know, we, we want you, we want you engaged, we think you have things to offer, and by offering those services, they're actually demonstrating that as well. Um, and the other common thread is that Midbury students are sharing their gifts, talents, and passions, excitements, and interests. <laughs> and professionally and personally, I think there's a lot to, to get out of. I know for me, I learned the most when I was doing like work experiences in college, where I got to, I was telling Laura the other day, I got to do an archaeological dig over the summer. Like, that's what I got. That was cool, you know, and that helped me realize I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. So, <laughs> it was cool, but I just didn't want to be down on my knees and getting dirty all the time. So, um, so you can get, you know, it can help you in terms of the direction that you want to take personally and professionally. Um, and I think that 
when I was in touch with one of the community friends mentors and she said it helped her appreciate what she had by seeing what life was like for some of our students and that by seeing the students' resilience that, that they demonstrated that it that helped her realize just kind of like, wow, this is really impressive, I can do this too. Um, so those are some of the things that are going on. And um, I'm gonna let you let Laura tell you about some of the other things that are going on in other campuses. Yes, Tiffany, you have a can I just interject? I was gonna wait till the end, but um, just because there I know there are students from all different schools here, but for the Middlebury schools, especially if you don't have transportation or you don't have funding, I just wanted to let you know that I direct the community engagement office and we can provide you help with reserving a college car to go the eleven miles out or um, helping to find drivers, or um, there's a student service cluster board of all the student service um, clubs and organizations and initiatives, and they have something called a flex fund, so if you needed a little bit of money to buy supplies or something like that, and I don't want to overemphasize the money because it's not about having money with what you do with these kids, it's just spending time with the kids. And um, just on a personal note, I spent a day plus out at Bridport, and it's such a welcoming, wonderful community. So um, I just really encourage you to think seriously. And I wanted to say it now so that you could think about the possibility as you go through the rest of this that there's support here institutionally for you to pursue whatever it is you're interested in rather than waiting to the end. Thank Sorry. You. No, that's that's really helpful. I made a note to myself to mention that during our next session. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So we can dream big. Yes. Dream big. Exactly. Great. So to help you dream big, I just want to share a little bit about some of the other things that universities affiliated with Ashoka are doing with some of their partner schools. Because after after uh, we've been just talking about this, we're going to let you all off to brainstorm how you can use your passions or the passions that you know other students have on your campus to support Bridport as well as other schools um, in your greater local area. So some quick highlights. Uh, one other change maker school in our network is Lusher Charter School in New Orleans. Um, and they're, I think, two blocks from Tulane University, which is another change maker campus. And Tulane sends a good portion of their teacher certification students over to Lusher. So those people, they've already identified their passion as education. So these folks um, get to go to Lusher and are learning how to be a change maker teacher by seeing other teachers in action already. But they've actually decided to start doing a research project on what's happening in that school. Um, and they're writing up a whole big study on Lusher. And they're actually doing a report, too. It's kind of cool. Um, and so they're using their passion for education, their career, and trying to influence the field more broadly to do this great study on the school and share that with more educators, um, hopefully all over the world, if they get that published. So that's a really cool thing. They're using their academic area as well as their day-to-day -day practical passion to, to support Lusher and really put them on a pedestal. Another school that we work with uh, is San Diego Cooperative Charter School in San Diego, California. And they're partnered with the University of San Diego, which is another change maker campus. And they have this really cool thing in their school. Um, it's kind of like electives, but their teachers and then other people in the community, like the students, put on special classes for the kids. Um, and a lot of times I've heard that people feel like they don't have a particular skill to share, like they don't know how to sew or they don't know how to cook or something. So it's sometimes hard for students to think of what they can do. But people came up with really incredible ideas that they share with this particular school. When I went and visited the school, there was a um, wilderness survival class going on. And the kids had turned the classroom into like the wilderness and there were forts built out of all the different materials in the classroom and they were just all having a great time together. So even just the spirit of play is something that you can bring um, with your time and with your imagination to uh, schools in your community. And then the last one that I think is really cool, especially in terms of education and social entrepreneurship that I wanted to share is from uh, Arizona State University. Arizona State has a charter K through 12 school um, called ASU Prep, and their ninth graders actually um, work with Ashoka uh, and work with the university to start their own social ventures. So these high schoolers actually go through a curriculum where they get to come up with a social venture idea and launch it before they leave the ninth grade. 
So that's something you can kind of like start dreaming big about too, because I know Bridport's thought about that a little bit, how their students can think of ideas to influence their community and influence the problems they see every day. So now we're going to turn you loose. We're not going to take any more of your time. We're going to ask that you break into groups of three people. Um, if we, if we don't have the numbers for that, one group of four people is fine. And we'll give you a sheet of poster paper and a marker. Uh, just brainstorm ideas of things that you think uh, you can do. And actually, you know what, I jumped the gun. You were going to share some of your ideas for like things people have wanted to do in Bridport before, right? Yeah, this is kind of, I wanted to give you a sense of our, sort of our, our wish list. Great. Um, first of all, we love all the things that are already going on. We love that Molly and Mati are coming out to do the, the Bridport Babel. Um, we love when um, we have Millbury students come out and run our after school clubs. They're going to be starting up again in another couple of weeks. Um, there's lots of really cool stuff going on. Um, would love to have some more sort of community and parent and student combined activities. So I know um, there's uh, like a swing club on campus and I've been working with um, Dan Murphy over in community engagement to kind of see if we can get them to come out and do a performance and teach a little bit with us. And, um, and yeah, so the things that have been going on already have been excellent about teaching empathy, um, which is what this is about, leadership, teamwork, um, resilience, and, and that sort of thing. What I would be really interested in is to think about how your skills and passions can actually facilitate students to be change makers now. So um, one of my favorite quotes is by Frank Tybalt. He, I wrote a book that I can't remember the name of, but um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but it's action always generates inspiration. Inspiration seldom generates action. And so I know the person, I had experiences where I was like, oh, I want to be like them someday. You know, where there were older people in my life that were really inspiring. But I would love to, bring, to, to sort of narrow that gap and say, okay, what can you do? What can you bring to any school maybe that you want to go to or any community? And think about, okay, how can I actually facilitate these people being change makers in this moment right now? Um, so that's, that's sort of what, what we're thinking about. That's yeah. like taking it to the next level. Yeah, I love it. That's an yeah. awesome challenge. So I'll, I can write that on the board. Um, if you want. Perfect. Yeah. And I will pass out the paper and markers. And we'll do this for about 10 minutes. And at the very end, uh, when we have five minutes left, I think it would be a good idea for us to do a gallery walk so that everyone can see all the other ideas. And then we'll leave with some upcoming activities that you can already jump in and get involved in. So find your groups of three people, and I will give you a post of paper. Um, and I, I 
I've done a lot of work with kids sort of informally in a volunteer setting, and they get really excited about like raising money for a cause that they choose, even if it's not a lot. Um, so that was one thing we talked about. Um, we also talked about the fact that encouraging kids to, to be change makers, you know, not everyone is good at making change the same way. Um, you know, some people are comfortable going out in the community and talking to strangers, and others are really good at doing research on a computer. You know, but all of those different types of tasks are potentially helpful to a larger effort where people are trying to bring about social change. Um, do you want to talk about the next couple? Um, yeah, sure. So I think one of the big ones was uh, failure equals opportunity. So <clears throat> uh, we learn most in our lives, uh, not by our successes, but usually our failures because um, we don't figure ourselves up and just look for the what's to do next. I think, you know, failures does bring, um, always brings the sense of a, of a new opportunity. So I think that was, that was big. big yeah, it was, uh, that, that was something I was thinking about all day because we come together in these kind of these opportunities. We talk about everything that's been successful and we're like yay for the successes when really, you know, a failure is a fantastic, like John kept talking about the technological opportunities this morning. And I thought that was great. <laughs> but I think really there's so much pressure now on kids to be academically successful, you know, but it's really good if someone, if a kid fails at something, it's really good to sit down with the kid and be like, you know, what, what did you learn from this, you know? Mm -hmm. Or what, do you want to try it again? You know, what, what do you think you should change? And instead of just sweeping it under the rug. So we didn't really talk about like what to do in terms of our passions, but these are the sort of, you know, lessons that we thought would apply to any, you know, any sort of forum or any sort of topic that you might want to do. These would be important steps to take to empower kids to believe that there's something that they can do, they have the capacity you know, to, to bring about Thanks. good stuff. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. Just, yeah. okay. How about some of the folks that were in the back left corner? <laughs> and we're, we're definitely um, going to run over a couple minutes, so if you have to leave, you understand, but if you want to just kind of um, maybe talk about your, your talk. Okay. Moment. Um, so this is an idea that I've been thinking about for a really long time. Um, I'm recently um, trying to get into coding, and so the whole coder dojo thing was really appropriate for um, when I'm thinking about these next few months. Um, and I was also approached by my Spanish teacher recently about some Mexican immigrants, and specifically their children, who, um, you know, their parents are farmers, and they don't really get out into the community a lot. Um, so I was thinking, wouldn't it be really cool if we could have a coding camp plus a lot of other fun stuff you can do with kids um, with these uh, Mexican immigrants to get them, you know, into the community, learning new skills, learning how to teach new kids, um, and also getting kids from Middlebury and high school students like ourselves um, helping with those Mexican immigrants. Great, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I think there are folks in the middle or something. Yeah, sure. Should we go up to the board or? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, one quick highlight. Um, okay, so we pretty much wanted to start from the bottom up, um, as in um, the key things to teach uh, younger kids so that in the future they can um, uh, you know, keep those uh, teachings uh, going. Yeah, pass them on to their parents and, and bring them home. Like yeah, and so the big things were music, uh, languages, and um, you know, learning about the brain and how it works. Um, and so we had you know, workshops and things that uh, uh, gets all the kids involved and uh, sort of feel like they need to be needed in a group um, or, a, you know, um, that they uh, need to feel a part of something. And that's important for all kids, we believe. Um, Great. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and the folks in the back right corner. Um, oh, I'm on sorry. On uh, let's do these guys first. Oh, we'll be back. start 
off quickly, we realized the one thing that we all had in common that we are passionate about is the environment. So that was kind of what led our thinking process. Awesome. And do you want to say something? Yeah, um, we thought about, we were brainstorming about like a summer program that would center around themes in the environment that include a bunch of different activities and then kind of ask them to come up with an idea at the end. And cool. present it to the group. Yeah. Any final words? Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just really like freaked out about environment because I know, at least for me, uh, when I leave the classroom, I get way more interested in that side of the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That seems to be a big interest area at Millbury. Yeah. So, then a lot of folks might be into that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. sort of shared experience that might um, not have a power differential, but might allow for some sort of shared culture to come out of that, to help develop these relationships that would allow for um, a sense of helping one another. Um, and you, one idea that, you, that was mentioned was maybe providing a service through that experience, like watching children or something, so that you could <coughs> work with the adults, perhaps, on whatever it is. Uh, might need to be kind of problem solved to help with this change maker kind of relationship. Um, or it was even more like it, in some ways it was free babysitting to allow the parents a night out. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, we do that at college. Like we, there are communal babysitting nights where all the kids come to the gym and we watch the kids and the parents do something else. And we're thinking like a movie night where the parents, the families can all be together, or if you want to just, you know, give the parents some free time. A lot of night if we have the college yeah. students watch the kids. Or like we have Dolce on campus, we have a lot of like talented cooks on campus who we do big dinners for the student body, we do big dinners for parents too. So cool. I bet they could do big dinners for you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, last one. Yeah, that's it. Screw the back. So we also took a similar approach to the last group, um, not so much finding how our passions all intersect, but finding out how to instigate following your passion. And so we dealt with the gap between um, parents and their students um, being involved in schools and getting involved with the whole school system and participating. So we thought, what's the best way to get parents involved instead of just saying, hey, what do you guys want to do for us? Like thinking, okay, do it. Um, and then just, they won't because people aren't always honest about what they want to do. For a group, we thought, what if we kind of trick parents into um, saying, what do you want your student to get out of school, or what do you want your student to learn? And there are going to be some answers like math, grammar, you know, the basic stuff, but also going to be answers like, I want my student to know how to make friends, I want my student to know how to handle bullies, I want my student to do X, Y, Z. And then what you can do is suddenly the parents are more passionate, it's more individualized towards their student, it's something that they really do want them to learn. You can say, how do you think we should teach that? And some parents are going to give good advice, some parents are going to give so so advice, but the parents that did start giving really good advice, if you start taking that, are gonna get a lot more involved. And the students and the parents that have good ideas but necessarily not the greatest advice are gonna see if you start acting on that, how they want to get involved or how they're being listened to, and then they're gonna be more encouraged to get involved and they might even start participating themselves in the programs that you're doing. Smart. Cool. Thank you. Thank you everyone. So on the back of your volunteer profile, um, a couple of cool things for us. Next Friday night report is, well, I am coordinating a report hockey night at Middlebury here. And so it's going to be at the men's game versus Tufts. And we're just, we just invited the whole community to come out. And um, it's a way to get on campus, so I'm really excited about that. So if you want to come and say hi, do that. I'll have a sign that says, hey, we're at the report. And then next Friday, this is through my VISTA, uh, my Vista program. We're actually doing a, a cross-campus conversation. And it's a meet and greet for college mentors. So if you are a college student and you're mentoring somebody, you're welcome to come. Or if you are just interested in getting to know what that might be like, you're welcome to come. 
it's at Champlain College, and um, the RSVP information is here, and there's going to be lunch, and it's going to be chill. So, And there's going to be some um, transportation coordinated through community engagement office as well. So um, if you contact me, um, you can email me or you can email me on your account. And then there is a volunteer survey. We'd love to hear from you if you are interested at all to work with the report. And if you don't want to do it now, because we are over on time, there is a, um, a link up there. It's a bitly link. It's just bit.ly slash PCS volunteer interest. And I would just love to hear from one or two people what they're taking away from our session today. Because I'm blinded by the sun. Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to share just sort of one or two things that they're walking away with today? It could be anything. Just inspiration or anything. Okay. Um, that you're actually doing it, which I, I think is awesome. You're not just talking about you doing it. Cool. Anybody can do it. They don't have to. Volunteer for a year. Anybody can, can can definitely do it too. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, well, this is just kind of like a, an experience I had with a former Ripton student. Um, there's like a superintendent group at the high school, um, where like a bunch of different kids are coming together and trying to work on things the schools to fix. And recently, I was paired with someone who was from Bedport, but he's now in high school, and he expressed to me how really bad an experience it was for him, and so. I'm really glad that you guys are starting to improve it and that there will be some high schoolers who want a really good report yeah. soon. There, it's, you know, there's a lot of really positive stuff going on, yeah. but there are a lot of challenges. Um, and, uh, and it's exciting for me to come in and see some of that stuff that is changing. And mm -hmm. all the, uh, to me, some of the most exciting stuff are mm -hmm. the ways that the community is getting, getting involved and the library is getting involved too. So, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.